is the sheep dog to look into the eyes of the sheep because in looking at the eyes of the sheep you you see what you believe to be your origin look at this process first you nurture the sheep dog on the sheep then psychologically you give the sheep the image that its origin is the sheep and then given the territorial imperative or the territorial instincts instinct of the sheep dog as the sheep dog becomes a teenager you you put into the barnyard baby sheep dogs the baby I mean, your baby sheep dogs the sheep dog who's a teenager now in time will fight the baby because of its territorial instinct but what it learns and what is conditioned to believe is that that which nurtured it that which is its origin must be protected at the price of other sheep dogs we are sheep dogs we are sheep dogs it's not enough for us to be talking about what them other black folk did what them other black folk did we have to look at ourselves and see that we are victims of the same process where we believe that our nurturance and sometimes and, and, and Ellis told me I shouldn't do this but I have to use the analogy I have to use this example uh, Clarence Thomas probably represents a good example of this because being nurtured at the breast of Barbara Bush being nurtured at the breast of Barbara Bush and then looking to the eyes of, of, of um, Pre President Bush he begins to believe that he is a Bush <laughs> he is a Bush and any other black man, woman or child that comes into his territorial imperative will be attacked to the death now that is something we have to understand because why I use uh, uh, Clarence the fact of the matter is that it's in each of us We've been trained that way. We've been nurtured that way. We've been looking into the eyes of the, she of the sheep and not realizing what it means to be an authentic African. That's our quest. Our quest is to begin to talk about turning away from, turning away from these images and these notions of systematic reformation of the mind. See, we've been rearranged. We don't need to be upset about it. The fact of the matter is that we've been rearranged. And if, I'm, if I recognize that I've been rearranged, it seems to me that's an empowerment. Because now the task is, how do I rearrange the brother back? How do I rearrange the sister back? It becomes a mathematical equation for us to begin to struggle with this in an, in an analytical way to look at how, in fact, we can turn that around. The arrangement process is, in fact, predictable. All the results of the arrangement, we know. We see them. Mental illness in the African community is the result of the arrangement. Drug addiction, alcoholism, poverty, ignorance, family dysfunctioning are all examples of our being rearranged. Uh, homelessness, spousal abuse, black on black crime, depression, alienation, all those are part of the fact of us being rearranged. Uh, racial rejection, I mean the fact that you, re you reject that which is essential to who you are has to be the results of a rearrangement. Uh, gender confusion, rearrangement, uh, self-negation and, and denigration. All those are problems in our communities, but they're the results of this systematic notion of rearrangement. So what do we do with that if we, if we begin to take the analysis and say these are the issues? Then we no longer begin to indict each other about what we're not doing. Our task, your task, is to begin to understand that if this is a, a result of the rearrangement, how do I restructure restructure the Africanness in us so that we are no longer looking into the eyes of the of the sheep and believing that we are in fact more sheep than dog we do that by what Ellis has talked about in terms of energy and motion that concept is important when you know sometimes we have these conferences we do that we we sit back and think about the titles more in terms of if it's catchy and exotic that we get people to come to and not that it has meaning and guidelines for us to move forward it is a meaning and a guideline that I want to uh, to work through with you in terms of this notion of energy in motion because the energy in motion really is a euphemism for understanding the African spirit. That's what the energy in motion is about. It's about understanding the African spirit and that understanding of the African spirit is what is being driven or, or worked through. We're struggling with these issues. It's not 
finalized. But the, in quote, Afrocentric scholars, the African-centered scholars, are struggling with trying to understand this notion of energy and spirit and power as conceptualized in the African tradition. Not as, again, a romantic uh, moment of masturbation with the past. It is, in fact, it is, in fact, a life necessity for us to understand what are the templates and the blueprints that we can pull out and utilize, as Naim was saying, in terms of having the ideal. The ideal gives us the guide and the groundwork for building the future. Afrocentric is nothing exotic. It simply is a concept. And concepts are important because the ideas are the substance of behavior. Ideas are the substance of behavior. If I say niggas ain't shit, that's an idea. But it influences your behavior. Because as soon as you internalize that idea, you do everything to get away from who you believe to be those black people. Uh, you do everything to, to downgrade those people because you've taken on an idea that has to do with uh, influencing your behavior. Afrocentricity is essentially a term, a concept that, that categorizes a quality of thought in practice which is rooted in the cultural image and interest of people of African ancestry. It is the quality of thought and practice that we have to struggle with. The quality of thought and practice. It is not simply taking away white folks doing painting it black. It is understanding what is the essential difference, the essential, excuse me, not difference, the essential uniqueness of our way of thinking and our way of doing. It is in fact the, the uh, Afrocentricity represents the, the fact that that African people as human beings have a right and a responsibility, a right and a responsibility to center ourselves in our own subjective possibilities and probabilities and not someone else's objective illusions about who we are. Sheepdog takes the other people, they take the sheep's illusions about the sheepdog and make those real. We have to begin to understand and center ourselves in our own subjective possibilities and uh, in particular.